Praise the Lord. Wow. I'm telling you, I'm excited. Uh, Katie and I are always very excited to be able to speak to the people of God about the revelation God is giving us. And so I know that you're going to be blessed mightily today. Uh, it's going to be a very dynamic, dynamic. By the way, there's a Q&A because we are using Zoom, Zoom webinar. It has the best features for Q&A. So if you got questions uh, for me and Katie, we are going to handle many, as many as we can at the end. But again, we are also going to pray for miracle signs and wonders because we believe in miracles, signs and wonders happening. Praise the Lord. So again, I'm just going to get it going here. I'm excited again that you came to this incredible Bible study uh, where Katie, Susan and I are offering one of our modules in our school on Idols Riot uh, for free so that you uh, can just uh, enjoy the revelation. We're going to be dealing with, uh, we're going to be dealing with, uh, re- we're going to be reviewing the 12 laws of an altar. So it's going to be amazingly powerful as we go through this together. The 12 laws of an altar. Praise God. So, um, uh, uh, Katie Souza, anything to say before we get started? Yeah, um, no, just welcome to everybody. Thanks for joining on, you guys. I'm in Phoenix. Dr. Miles is in his studio in Atlanta. And we're getting together because this actually coming weekend, we're having an Idols Riot Intensive Healing School. Okay, so this is just a tidbit. Well, actually, it's going to be a, a full meal deal tonight. But it's just a part of what we're going to be doing this weekend. So if you haven't signed up yet to go in person, you can go to idolsriot.com and sign up. But also if you can't get to Atlanta, because that's where the school is this weekend, you need to sign up for our live stream because you can actually take the class via live stream. You're going to get the book. You're going to get the manual that comes with the class. You're going to get a graduation certificate. And we're also going to have a live miracle working service on Friday night where we work the miracles and we include you in that miracle working process. So you can learn how to work the miracles too, even while you're online. So this is just a, a a really good crunchy, yummy dinner um, that we're going to be presenting the whole meal deal Friday and Saturday in Atlanta. So go to idolsright.com and sign up. So I'm going to toss it back to Dr. Miles. And I know, first of all, Dr. Miles, I need you to explain to everybody watching, what is an altar? Because they need to know that everybody has altars in their life, in their bloodline, in their soul. And that way they understand the importance of of how to get rid of these altars so they can get breakthrough. Fantastic. Amen. So uh, what I want to do is just go through a couple of announcements we have, and then we're going to get going. Katie, I'll answer your question. uh, That's where I want to start, because that's where we got to start before we review the 12 laws of an altar. Praise God. People are still coming in. That's amazing. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, praise God. We we are also live on YouTube. And and I think we put, we just, they just posted the, the live link for YouTube on my Facebook. So you can share it. Uh, from my Facebook page to any Facebook page in there. Praise God. And I think uh, we're going to share it to Katie Souza's page as well, the URL for the YouTube feed. Praise God. But we still got some room on this webinar if you want to come. So uh, can you throw up, uh, Mr. Director, throw, throw up uh, the flyer, the first flyer, and just uh, praise God, just so people can see what P- Katie was talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's what Katie was talking about was talking about it's um, this is our idols riot that we are doing uh, here in a uh, here it's going to be amazing uh, it's going to be amazing time of the God encounter so we've got some five spots that are left we've got some five spots that are left that are going to be so powerful uh, so we've got five uh, seats that are left in the live one because this one the live one is very restricted so we've got. Uh, uh, five spots led. So if you want to be part of the live audience for this coming Idols Right Intensive Healing School that begins on Friday uh, here, in, here in, in Georgia, go to idolsriot.com while you've got five spots left and you can get those one of those spots. But the live streaming is uh, uh, option is going to be available 
Praise God. So definitely join us for that. Amen. So anyway, I'm ready to start the show. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, praise the living God. So uh, God is a great God. We're excited today. Uh, we're going to be talking, re reviewing the 12 laws of an altar. And in a few minutes, I'm going to share with you what Katie Souza said, what an altar is and how common altars are to the human experience. Uh, I, I tell you, you'll be so shocked that there's nothing more common to a human experience than the authors we deal with and the idols sometimes they bring or the God that they bring. So it just depends on what kind of altar you are dealing with. And so we're going to define that. Uh, but before I go into that aspect of my teaching on what an author is, I just I, I asked Apostle Brian Valley, who has hosted me and Katie Souza in his beautiful church, Redemption Church yeah, in Kissimmee, to just give us a take five minutes just to give us your testimony as a pastor, we embrace the message on idols riot. We embrace the message on altars. Tell the people, Apostle, uh, the benefit, the miracles you've seen in your church because of the subject of altars. Praise God. Uh, you, you know, it's first of all, I'd like to thank uh, both uh, you, Dr. Miles and Katie, uh, for having me today. I appreciate uh all that you've done for me and, and the friendship that I have with uh, both you and Katie. Uh, back in September of 2020, uh, Apostle, you came to Redemption here in Kissimmee, Florida, and you began to release a word uh, about the cross being the highest altar of the earth. And as you began to release uh, that word, uh, you know, miracles broke out throughout the church and it it gave me a desire to know more about altars and so as I began to study altars as I began to go over the 12 laws of altars the Lord began to show me how it correlates to the cross and and so how those laws correlate to the cross and so he began to show me how the power of the cross is based on uh, what you do at the altar. And if, if the cross is the highest altar, we've attended the altar of the cross when we came to salvation, when we got saved. And we immediately began to attend to that cross. And, and from that, I began to see uh, we need to crucify the old nature. Uh, that's an altar, right? Uh, how we need to crucify the flesh. And, and I was able to tie the crucifixion of the old nature of the flesh, even the crucifixion of the world, uh, that's in us uh, and around us, uh, I began to tie all those things to the laws and I began to see how, how crucial they are and how they work uh, for us or against us. Um, and, and, and I asked a few people about testimonies uh, regarding uh, that series that I began to preach based on the revelation uh, that you brought to the church, uh, the study of the 12 laws of the altar and tying it uh, to the cross and what the cross did for us. We know that in Isaiah 53, uh, we can clearly see uh, what the cross uh, does for us. We know that by his stripes, we are healed. We, we know, right, that, that all things, that all oppression and all, all of that stuff, it, us being oppressed and, uh, and, and going through what we're going through is all taken care of at the cross. And, and so as I began to minister uh, th that series, the cross, the highest altar, and intertwine both the, the 12 laws and the power of the cross, the crucifixion that occurs on the cross, uh, the fact that it's at the cross that you can destroy the altar of your father's house. Uh, that was the last message uh, that I began to give um, here in the church. I had two gentlemen specifically um, one is a leader in the church. Well, they're both leaders. Um, uh, one of them told me it was in that message that he realized that he was tending to the altar of anger of his father. He, he was actually, he would hear his father's voice. He would, he would see what his father would do. And, and so when learning the 12 laws and then the power of the cross and how to apply those 12 laws 
to access the power, to access the crucifixion of the flesh, of the old nature of the world and, and of our father's house, he began to see that he was serving the altar of his father's house. And that altar was full of anger and hatred and murder. I had another gentleman uh, during, uh, he was following along in the preachings and, and he says, and, and, and I quote, he says, it was one of the greatest times of warfare in his life. And he didn't know why. And when I began to minister on, on the altar of your father's house, what, be, what he began to realize was the reason why he was hearing whispers. You see, because he thought he was crucifying the flesh. He thought he was crucifying the old nature. He, he thought that the world was crucified. But the reality was, is that the altar of his father's house was still operating in his life to the point where he was hearing the whispers, the wow. whispers that would bring perverted thoughts, the whispers that would bring thoughts of violence, the whispers. And, and he couldn't understand. He, he says he would go to bed crying at night. But why am I still dealing with this? Why am I still hearing these things? What This is not the desire of my heart. I want God. I want God more than anything. I don't understand it. And his testimony is that that Sunday when he went home, he began to realize that the whisper was in the sound of his father's voice. And he began to realize that all the thoughts that were coming were because he was still honoring his father in such a way that he was actually tending to the altar of his father's house. He says wow. that night he, w he went into a spiritual battle and, and things began to break off of his life. <laughs> and, and he actually got to encounter the true power of the cross when he began to realize how he tends to the altars in his life, especially how we tended to the altar of his father's house. Amen. My and, and, God. And so, this... Go ahead, Apostle. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, so so we, we've gotten countless testimonies where, where people didn't understand what was going on in their life. And, 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 and when we took those 12 laws and, and, and really tied them to what we ought to be doing at, at, at the feet of Jesus, at the foot of the cross. You know, the Bible says, uh, pick up your cross and, and, and carry it, right? Uh, and follow him. And, and, and I think sometimes we do that, uh, but, but we're not actually understanding everything that we need to do when we're at the cross. And so I've noticed that the men in the house, they, there was really a radical change in the men of the house as I began to... to to minister that word. And, and we thank God, Apostle, that, that you were able to come and, and release that so that he can stir up the desire uh, within me and within the house to know more about altars, right? And, 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 and I think we, we know the cross, but to see the cross as the highest altar, to see it as, as where the greatest exchange that, that, that will transform our life occurs is at the cross, it, 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 it was just life changing. It was life changing uh, for the men in the house. It was life changing uh, for myself uh, as I began to study that, because what, what it does, uh, you know, I, before I can manifest kingship on the earth, I need to manifest the priesthood. And if I don't know what to do at the altar, then my priestly duties are not at its maximum effort. And then that limits my kingly duties. And, and we're all called to be priests and kings. I'm, I'm just using myself as the example. And, and so if we don't understand the laws, then we will not tend to the altar, in particular, the altar of the cross, the way we ought to. And then what happens is we try to reign as a king at a level that we have yet to have sacrificed as a priest. And, wow. and so that's why I believe the laws are so important. And especially in the aspect that you have been able to bring them uh, with Katie, uh, because the revelation is, can just change. You know, I, I believe one word can change a person's life. One word from God. I believe these 12 laws, if you understand them and you apply them in your life, uh, they'll transform your life beyond anything that you can imagine. 
Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, what a way to begin this. Amen. Wow, man of God, you, I could not have said it any better. You know, you are experiencing the miracles of the message. So we're going to get into the message. So beginning, uh, before Katie Souza and I are going into the 12 laws of an altar, I want to first make sure that anybody who's on the Zoom with us today, those who are live streaming via YouTube and Facebook, I, wanna, I want to let you know that uh, God wants you to understand why this message is very important. Why, what, are, what is an altar? Okay, and that is the, the, the thing that we must answer before reviewing the 12 laws of this divine platform called the altar. Well, uh, in the book of Genesis 126, very quickly, God creates his masterpiece, and that is you and I. And the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then he uses two words that would make altars important platforms of exchange between two worlds. God uses two words that would change the relationship between man and God and God and man. And those two words are let them. Let them have dominion. That word dominion is mamlaka in the Hebrew. Mamlaka means to rule, to have kingly authority. It means, it literally means of leadership. It means of complete authority over something. So man was given dominion over the earth. But because God used two words, let them, those words let them are exclusive to two genders, male and female. Because God defines who the dominion was given to. It was given to the two genders, male and female. You know, and that's a, that's, that's a subject for another time, why there's so much gender confusion and gender wars in the world we're living today. It's really a demonic strategy because the enemy knows that dominion on earth was legally given to two genders, the male and the female. Now, male and female is interesting because though the expression male and female is talking about the spirit of man housed in a physical body because you know that spirit has no gender, just like God has no gender because God is a spirit. But, but there is gender in the body. So by God uh, uh, alluding to gender is making it very clear that the law of dominion belongs to spirits in physical bodies of dirt. I'll say it again. By, by pointing to gender as the, as, the, uh, as the hang warrior of dominion, God is making it clear that this earth could now be governed by sovereign decree, will now be governed by spirits in physical bodies of dirt this will explain why demons fight to stay in the human body because they know that earth is the world of men earth is the world of men with earth is the world of men in physical bodies of dirt it's very important for you to understand that so god gives dominion mamlaka complete authority over this earth to men therefore making man the exclusive authority figure for the planet. Now, because God did that, essentially what he did, he locked himself out of the world of men. God locked himself out of the world of men and every other spirit. Now, how do, does then, how does then man uh, and God work together when God creates a law that divides the two worlds, the world of spirit from the world of the terrestrial beings, which is you and I who carry physical bodies of dirt. Well, God created a legal interface, a legal interface or a gate in the spirit, so to speak, that can connect two worlds, the world of spirit with the world of, of flesh. That entity is called an altar. So God devises an altar as a place of meeting. A, a place of meeting, a place of exchange where spirits and human uh, and, and uh, spirits and flesh and men of flesh and women of flesh can meet together on legal grounds. Now, the altar can be physical, like the ones that we, you, we, we, you, some of us, some of, many of you have seen, uh, but the altars are also invisible gates. You know, an altar can also be invisible. And that is one of the things we'll be dealing with, you know. Sometimes you can have an altar in your bloodline. You love Jesus, but you are fighting an invisible altar or gate in the bloodline. Uh, now, an altar is a legal infrastructure. 
This is why whenever there is an evil order in your life, just praying it away is not enough. You have to know how to take the evil order into the court of heaven to dismantle the legal rights that were given to that gate or invisible entry point by anybody in your bloodline or or even yourself. Uh, Sometimes we do it to ourselves. Let's be honest. Sometimes we, we haven't walked perfect lives. Some of us, before we came to Jesus, we made a lot of covenants that now we have to undo now that we have come to know Jesus. And sometimes even when you are in the Lord, because of unhealed soul conditions, we can open ourselves to idolatry and then and erecting altars in our soul to, those, uh, to the things we idolize and then have to fight those or, end up in, or find ourselves that we're having to attend to things that, are, that take away, drive us away from the living God. So in, 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 in really, in short, an altar is, is simply a, a legal, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place of meeting, it's a, it's a platform of exchange where humanity can meet with divinity on legal grounds. Now, when we say divinity, we are, talking that we're, we're, we are referencing the celestial beings. So the divinity could be God, and, that, and, and God or his holy angels, and you meet, you meet God and his holy angels at what we call a righteous altar. But because Satan is a master copycat, he realized that God was gating into the world of men by coming into an agreement with a man or partnering with a man on earth and then when that partnership happened, you know, an altar was born and allowed God to engage that man, Abraham, Noah, on legal grounds without God violating the law of dominion or the law of territory. Well, the enemy saw how God was doing it. And because men had already fallen into sin, a law, it was so easy for the enemy over the course of human history to seduce many, many um, people to create evil altars, gateways into the bloodline, gateways into their life that where demons can enter that bloodline are on legal grounds. The good news is we, we are able to take these evil altars in the court of heaven and see them destroyed. So today what Katie and I want to do is take you through the 12 laws of an altar. Because this platform, this platform, this spiritual platform called an altar that anybody in the Bible has dealt with, including Jesus died on the the altar of the cross. The Bible in 1 Peter 2.24 actually calls the, the cross an altar that Jesus died on. Because altars cannot be avoided. They are, the, they are the only legal way for spirits and men to connect on legal grounds. So this is what we're going to be dealing with today is this platform that can exist in our soul or it can exist in our bloodline. And how these evil orders, if they're evil orders, the kind of problems they can bring in our lives. They can tie us to vicious cycles. And you're going to find out why when we go through the 12 laws of an altar. So with that said, I'm going to let Kerry Souza begin to, uh, we're going to be going back and forth, reviewing the 12 laws of the altar. So Katie, what is the first law we're going to reveal? Yeah, I'm going to say that right now, but first I just want to bring it more into a practical realm for all of you. You know, each one of you, if you're pursuing the Lord, you've been building an altar to the Lord in your house. You build the altar through worship, through fasting, through prayer. When you get up in the morning and you spend your devotional time with the Lord, you sit in your favorite chair and you worship, you pray in tongues, you you, uh, take communion in that place. That's That's all a part of building an altar to the Lord in your house and even in your soul. Because you're building the presence of the Lord inside yourself and also the presence inside your atmosphere of your home or wherever your place of meeting with God is. But the problem is, is that we've also built altars to demon gods. I mean, in the Old Testament, you know, they would erect altars and they would either worship God from that place like we do in our homes or they would bring sacrifices to, you know, gods and goddesses of fertility or harvest or you know anything like that and they would make their sacrifices bring their time to those gods well we're doing that too we're building an altar to god in our house but we're also building altars to demon gods and you might say how just in a practical way and i'll make this short so we can get to the first law of altars 
And that is just to like, let's say you have a food addiction. Well, you know, food is a lot of times an idol and we build an altar to that idol. Think about it in the Old Testament, whenever they worshiped gods or even God himself, they would bring food as a sacrifice to the altar to honor that God or even God himself. I mean, the Israelites used to bring grain and wine and oil to those altars to worship the Lord. But the pagan people and even the Israelites themselves would bring food to the altar of demon gods to sacrifice to him. In, in, in uh, Amos, it talks about how the women would make these cakes, these raisin cakes, and bring them to the altar to dedicate them to the goddess, the queen of heaven. Well, we do the same thing. If you have a food addiction and you can't lose weight, you can't stop eating, um, you have problems with obesity or any food-related diseases like diabetes or cholesterol problems or heart problems, it could be that you built an altar in your home to food or, or there's an altar that's been built in your bloodline to food where your refrigerator becomes a place or your pantry becomes a place where you go and you spend a lot of time with the doors open, getting food in and out, going to the pantry, you know, staring at what there is to eat, eating throughout the day, eating when you're not hungry, overeating. That's all a part of building an altar, a negative altar to demon gods inside your home and even inside your soul. And then the demonic spirit that you meet at that place begins to control your life and even drive you to eat more. Okay, that's just a small example. So Dr. Miles, I'm going to go, we're going to go through the 12 laws of altars, which you wrote this chapter in our book, Idols Riot, that we co-wrote together. And number one is all altars have a dedicated human attendant. Can you please elaborate on that? Yes. You know, Katie, that's very, very powerful. So one of the, the first laws, the first law of an altar is that all altars have a dedicated human attendant. Why is this law of an altar very important? It is important because by the very definition of an altar, it cannot exist until a human in, wants to invite a spirit uh, to, uh, into the world of men, whether that spirit is God, is angels, or the demonic. So that's why in the Bible, you never find a place where God or a spirit ever built their own altar. In the Bible, <laughs> even evil altars were built by men. You know, uh, 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 King Ahaz went to Damascus to visit the, the, the Assyrian king. And it's in your, one, of your, uh, one of your chapters, Katie. And when he was there, he was impressed because he was an idolater. He saw the altar that the king of Assyria was worshiping from. He ordered the replica of that altar to be built at the temple of Jerusalem. But once again, it was the man that was building the altar. Why? Because the, the human attendant, is the most important feature of an altar because the human attendant is the one who legalizes that exchange because earth is the world of men. So therefore, uh, the human attendant is the one who plays, for lack of a better word, he's the host in the world of men of that particular spirit that is behind the altar that is being, that is being serviced. So in the Bible, everywhere we find this, we find men. Abraham in, uh, comes into the promised land that God told him he, he will possess by promise. And the first thing he did, Kerry, was to build an altar. And he began to attend to that altar. And as soon as he began to attend to that altar, the Bible says and God appeared to him because God became the spirit at that altar that was being invited by Abraham. Abraham was trying to partner with God in the world of men using a legal entry that God would use to come into and he built an altar. We see the same thing with Noah. The first thing Noah does when he comes out of the flood was to build an altar. First thing, he does not build his own house. I mean, the first thing out of the gate, he realizes in this new world, I mean, the old world is gone. I need the power of God to, to help. I need God to help me rebuild this new world. I need the supernatural power of God backing me up. And he knew the only way to do it, to have God legally work with him, was to build God, to build God these altars. So all altars without exception are built by men. 
Uh, and so that's why every altar has a dedicated human attendant, you know, and that's why when you, you know, as we go deep into the different laws, you can see that right there, deliverance is built into that. Because if you are saving, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are being harassed by an evil altar in your bloodline, you know, uh, the reason it's harassing you is because that altar is calling you to come and attend to it because maybe in the family it has lost its original attendant and now it's trying to jump on you because all altars, you know, they weaken. They, they begin to weaken if they don't have a human attendant. So without exception in the Bible, we have seen that the altars of God, the altars of devils all needed one thing. They had one thing in common. There was always a human attendant. In 1 Kings 13, verse 1 to 2, there is a story of a man of God who was sent out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel uh, uh, to, to destroy or to bring the judgment of the court of heaven against this evil altar. And when he got there, the, he found that King Jehoram, the king himself, was the attendant to this evil altar. And the man of God began to prophesy to the altar and begin to declare judgment against this, this altar. And of course, there was a reaction. The human attendant, the king got upset. He tried to strike the prophet, but God froze his hand because of course, you know, God was, God, God, you know, you know, God was taking over and destroying the part of this evil altar. But the point is, the man of God found the king attending to the altar because mm -hmm. all altars, without exception, have a dedicated human attendant. And the goal yeah. of our Bible study today is to make sure that if for whatever reason that is, mm -hmm. there was, that, that you found yourself without, without looking for it, you became an, uh, you found, if, if, you, if, you, if you're discerning there's an evil order that keeps drawing you, then the, 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 the goodness is be, before we are finished today, we believe God is going to deliver you by giving you a bill of divorcement from the court of heaven, from being an attendant to any evil altar that was released in your bloodline by anybody in your, in your, in your bloodline, or maybe by, by your own soul when you are wounded and then you, you, know, you open the door. But thank God that door can be closed and you don't have to be an attendant to that evil altar. So that is really what we mean by the first law of altars. All altars have a dedicated human attendant. I want you to chat in. Our, what altar are you being a human attendant to okay it could be our food is food have control over you alcohol smoking anger um are you always jealous are you always um depressed or anxious it, are you always sick repeated sicknesses happening over and over again what altar are you being a human attendant to because I want you to start really recognizing where these altars have been established in your life. And you can always tell by what are you attending to? What cycle have you been caught up in? So everybody that's online right now, chat that in as Dr. Miles goes in um, and starts talking about the, um, second, al the second law of altars. Yes, so Kerry, uh, in our book, we, we write that the, the second law of an altar is all altars have a guiding or supervising spirit. So Kerry, can you explain that law of an altar to the people of God, why we mean when we say all altars have a guiding or supervising spirit? Yeah, this one is super important, guys, and I'll tell you why. Because right now I see people are chatting in. Let me just read some of the stuff. Food, snacking. Uh, depression, anxiety, intellectualism, uh, fear, procrastination, sickness, hopelessness, sugar, offense, anxiety, control, spouse. I mean, the, these are great, you guys. These help us understand, too, what you're battling with so that at the end of this broadcast, we can break this stuff off of you. Okay, look, so Dr. Miles just asked, he, the second law of altars is all altars have a guiding or supervising spirit. This is super important to know. An altar is a power station where a human attendant meets with a divine presence or a divine being. It's either going to be God or it's going to be a devil. It's going to be a demonic evil spirit it's just like in the in the bible the people of 
of God when they were walking rightly before him would meet God. He was the supervising spirit over the altar in, in Jerusalem. They, they would meet with him there. But they also met with other gods on high places where they built altars. And, you know, the pagan people would do that. And even God's people would do that. You know, it's like, remember Solomon had 700 some odd wives. And what would he do? He would let them build these altars in different places, in high places in Jerusalem. And then he would go meet with the demon God, the supervising spirit that was in charge of that altar, that empowered that altar. You see, when you build an altar to an idol, to a demon God or goddess through food addiction, alcohol addiction, um, chronic sickness, uh, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, control, jealousy, whatever it is, every time you step into that addiction or that thing that's controlling you, you are being controlled and driven and manipulated and used by the demonic guiding spirit that's in charge of that altar. See, people in the Old Testament, they go and bring their sacrifices to that altar so that the divine guiding spirit that was connected to that altar would claim to empower them supernaturally, give them supernatural harvest, supernatural fertility, supernatural increase, whatever it is. Those demons are always promising to give you something in return for your sacrifices on that altar. But they're liars. Satan came to kill, steal, and control. He kill and steal and destroy. He is the father of all lies. He and his band of demonic spirits underneath him are the guiding spirits on demonic altars. Remember Gideon, the story of Gideon? He was called by God to win a war. And he ended up doing it with just against the Midianites with just a few men, a small, tiny army. But before he could go out and fulfill his call to whoop the enemy's butt and to free the Israelites from the control of the Midianites, he had to destroy the altars that his father had erected in his bloodline, the altar to Baal and the altar to Ashereth. Why? because those altars had guiding spirits connected to them, okay, that were controlling his life and would prevent him from accomplishing his mission. Right now, many of you are unable to see manifestation, to see breakthrough, to accomplish the mission God has given you because the guiding or supervising spirit, the demonic spirits, that are connected to the altars in your life or your bloodline are blocking you from your breakthrough. So Dr. Miles, in fact, you know what guys, chat in, where have you recognized that there's demonic resistance in your life? Have you been waiting for a dream to come to pass? Have you been believing for uh, a piece of land so you can buy it and develop a ministry or a business? Have you been fighting to try to get a building for a business idea you've had or a church that you want to birth? Have you been waiting for your children to get the breakthrough, but they're still stuck in their drug addiction and their negative attitudes, destructive attitudes? Chat in where you recognize that a guiding demonic spirit is blocking your victory. Amen. So while you chat that in, Dr. Miles, the third law of altars is this. All altars are powered by the sacrifices of a human attendant who attends to that altar. Can you explain? Wow, that's a, that's a powerful law, Katie. You know, all altar saints are powered by the sacrifice or sacrifices of the human attendant who services the altar. Since this is the reason why the devil does not want, this is the reason why the devil doesn't want God's people to, to live a sacrificial life towards God. Because he knows the more you live a sacrificial life towards God, the stronger the righteous altar of the Lord in your life is going to become. If you look through the entire Bible, including Jesus who died on the altar of the cross, all you have to know to know that the, 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 this, power, this, the, this powerful law of an altar 
you know, is immutable is that Jesus himself, the son of God, cannot avoid that law. He had to, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. This is why we, are, we can be on Zoom today, loving each other, believing God for power of God is because Jesus, the human attendant to the cross, to the cross, gave it up. I mean, he gave it all. So the power, the, the power of the cross was, it, 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 it's derived from the sacrifice of the human attendant, Jesus, who gave himself at that altar for the deliverance of us all. In the Bible, there's a story where King David actually brings out this law, Katie, in a very powerful way. And I'm just going to bring it up in, the, in, in uh, read the scripture, because I think people have to hear this. It, there is a plague that has broken out in Israel. 70,000 people have already died by the hand of the angel of the Lord because David made the mistake through pride of numbering Israel. The very thing God had told them through Moses must never be done. So God strikes the land and there, there was an angel who was killing people because of this iniquity by David. David understood the only way to stop this is to build God an altar that can speak to, to, can speak to the redemption of his iniquity. So he goes and he looks for a place where he could build the altar that and it belonged to a, one, of, one of his citizens by the name of Anua, Aranua. So in, the, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, 24 to 25, it says this, but King David says to Aranua, no, but I will buy it for you for the price. Because you see, Aranua wanted to give the, the land and the altar for free, but David says, no, 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 no. I'm going to buy it for a price. But David tells us why. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God of that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and, burnt, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prayers for the land and Israel's plague was stayed. Wow. David understood this law of the altar. You see, Aranua did not understand the law of altars. He thought, oh, I just love the king. I'm excited he's in my house, on my property, wants to buy something that belongs to me. You can have it for free. David says, no, there's no freebies when it comes to servicing altars. Whether righteous or demonic altars, they demand one thing of their attendant, sacrifice. All altars are, are fueled powered by the sacrifices of the human attendant. Now, how does this practically look like in your life? In, you know, in your life? Well, number one, your time. There is nothing more precious on earth than time. You, you actually, if you work a job or you have a business, guess what you leverage to get money for your business or clients for your business or get, or get, your, get, get your boss to give you that monthly paycheck. You leverage your God-given time to earn that money. So there's nothing more valuable to God than when you decide, hey, I'm going to surrender two hours of maybe a very busy day. I'm going to surrender that two hours to attend to the altar of the Lord in the house through prayer, through worship, through Bible study. And, keep, I, I, and I'm telling you, if you've lived long enough, you, you, you know sometimes giving God that two hours can be like pulling teeth. Because it's sometimes our lives are so busy, but we have to sacrifice. Otherwise, if we don't offer sacrifices, if we are to the, to the righteous altar of the Lord in our life, it will become weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's why many of us are having to fight demons all the time. Because even though we say we have the altar of the Lord in our lives, it's been abandoned for lack of sacrifice in time spent mm -hmm. there. And sometimes the sacrifice could be God having you give an offering into the work of the Lord. You know, there has been many, many times when God has taught me to give a sacrificial offering as part of my, my, my ongoing servicing of the altar of the Lord. And David understood that. But the truth of the matter is, even in the demonic world, this is a big deal. You know, even in the demonic world, you see the, the demand for sacrifice was very intense because not even the devil is going to let witches and, and warlocks save him and get supernatural power from him without them living a life of sacrifice. And so we have to do the same thing on the kingdom side where we sacrifice, we carry the spirit of sacrifice in our service to the Lord because without sacrifice, we weaken, we weaken the power of the altar of the Lord in our lives. And so this mm. is an important law of altars.
Yeah, guys, you just heard that. This is a major key. I want you to be real with yourself right now as you're watching, okay? And this is not to condemn you or to make you feel bad, but this is so that you can start having a self-awareness of what's going on in your life. Are you, what else are you servicing more? Okay. Are you spending enough time building the altar of God in your life? Okay. I, in fact, I, I want you to chat in. Are you fasting, praying? Are you uh, giving regular offerings plus, you know, your tithe? Uh, what, how are you servicing the altar of God? Where are you coming short? Again, this is not to condemn you. But if you start to realize, well, you know what? I haven't spent enough time in worship. I haven't spent enough time reading the word. I haven't spent enough time praying in the spirit. Because all those things are how, are, are how you service the altar. And the more you service the altar with your, of God, with your sacrifices, the more powerful that altar and that presence of God it comes in your life and it begins to wipe out the other altars that you've built. And controversially, what are you doing? Are you serving the altars to demon gods? Are you bringing all your attention? Chat that in. I mean, are you spending a lot of money on shopping, online shopping, you know, buying gadgets that you use once and then they end up in the garage? Uh, are you spending a lot of time and energy being angry? being upset, being overwhelmed, you know, how are you serving the demonic altar? Because if you're giving it more sacrifices, spending more money on your idols, than you are giving tithes and offerings to God, then you're building the strength of that evil altar in your life. So chat that in because we're going to go after this at the end of the broadcast. Okay, Dr. Miles, what's the next question? The Praise next God. law. I mean, I'm, I, I'm looking at people just as you are, do, you are doing. Somebody said, uh, you know, please, um, if somebody's praying for deliverance there, they said they believe that they are, they are fighting and the, the author of a spiritual husband, some, a, vi, a spirit visits them in the night. Listen, I'm telling you, God is going to deliver you. This is why this message on altars and idols is so powerful because whatever you find an altar that is a supervising spirit. And so in most cases, if it's an evil in all cases, if it's an evil altar, it's a demonic spirit. But the good news is you will be delivered. So hang on. We're going to be praying with you guys at the end of, uh, at the end of our, 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 our teaching today. Praise God. Yes, Katie. So, yeah, I'm going to go into uh, the, the, fourth laws, the fourth law of an altar. So, Katie, in the fourth law of an altar, it says, All altars, all attendants to an altar are fed by or provided for by the altar they serve. What does that mean? Okay, let me address that, but I just have to bring up one comment that I read. There's so many good ones, guys, but this was just the last one I'm seeing. I spend a lot of time mindlessly scrolling on my phone. I think we could all, we could all examine ourselves with that. Think about the amount of time you spend scrolling through Facebook or Twitter or you know, whatever it is, you could be spending that time being in the word, building the altar of God. You could spend that time worshiping. You could spend that time praying in tongues. You could spend that time, you know, writing a book for the kingdom, getting something done. A lot of people text, 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 text all day long. Well, by the time you've done all that texting, you could have written a breakthrough book that would change somebody's life. But we always, I mean, I'm just going to say it. I hope don't take offense, but we're always whining how we're not getting a breakthrough. We don't have an opportunity. You know, we're always talking about how we were going to write a book or do this or that. And we wonder why we can never get it done because we're attending to an evil altar, the altar of Facebook, the altar of social media by scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through our phones. I catch myself doing it. Okay. So this is an altar that we need to break and we need to repent of. Okay. So now Dr. Miles just said, all attendance to an Altar are fed by or provided for by the altar they serve. What does that mean? Listen to this scripture in 1 Corinthians 9, 13. 
says, do you not know that those men who are employed in the service of the temple get their food from the temple? And that those who tend the altar share with the altar in the offerings that are brought to it. Did you hear that? Those who attend to the altar of God get to share in the offerings that are brought to it. I'm going to be real, guys. If you have a financial lack or a need right now, you have to ask yourself, and I'm again, I'm not trying to condemn anyone, but you have to ask yourself, are you attending to the altar of God? Because if you are, you get to be, quote, fed by the altar in the temple. You get to share in the offerings brought to the altar. When you build the altar of God in your home, that altar feeds you. It does. It opens doors for you. It provides finances for you. It gives favor to you with other people or other ministries or other businesses so that you get new customers, so that you get speaking opportunities, so that you get online media opportunities. When you attend to the altar of God, the altar feeds you. It provides for you. It blesses you. The altar of God in your house pays the bills in the house. The altar, if you build the altar of God in your house, that altar will pay your bills. It will feed you and your children. It'll clothe you. It'll pay the mortgage. It'll pay your car payment. And that proof is in that scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 13. And every one of the priests that worked in the temple and attended to the altar of God in the temple got paid for, taken care of, and blessed because they served the altar of God. So if you have a need that's not being fulfilled, you have to ask yourself, are you attending to the altar? Have you built the altar up of God in your house to become strong? Because if you have, then all your bills and all your needs should be taken care of. Plus, plus, the more you continue to be consistent and faithful and tenacious to build that altar, the more you're going to see not only your bills taken care of, but then an increase, an increase of blessings coming into your household. Okay, so look, if that's you, is there a need that is not being fulfilled? Rent, mortgage, car payment, insurance, food, blessings, whatever is needed, overhead for business, okay, employee salaries. Just what is your need right now? Because you may need to strengthen the altar of God in your house. So chat that in because we're going to pray at the end of the broadcast. And Dr. Miles and I always go back and look at all these chats to pray for you individually. Okay, Dr. Miles, while they're chatting in what their need is, can you please address number the fifth altar, the fifth law of altars, which is this. All altars, and this is a good one, oh my gosh, are places of ritual, perpetual or repetitive activity. Wow, that is so powerful, Katie. And uh, why I'm, I'm, as I get ready to explain that law, uh, somebody, uh, there's a uh, Janine that said, I've tried to fast and it's difficult when you are battling food addictions. I've ne I never complete my fasting faithfully. Then I get upset with myself. Let me tell you what's happening. Is you are the perfect example of this law. In other words, you're going through a, a ritual, okay? Because what you have, a, you, you, this food addictions, the, because you are, you, are, you, are, you are an attendant at this moment. The good news is you are in the right Bible study to be set free. You are an attendant to the altar of food, of food addictions. So what is your ritual in your life? The ritual of somebody who has, who's addicted to a food altar, the way you know the ritual is you look at what keeps repeating in your life. As a matter of fact, Katie, this is the most important of the laws of an altar in terms of helping people identify what they are fighting. 
All you have to do is look at the rituals, look at the repetitive activity. I mean, I, I mean, if you have got an altar of rage, you love Jesus, but every other minute you are repenting because you got angry again. Then you say, I'm not going to get angry. Two hours later, you blow up again. Oh, I'm not going to get angry. I'm so sorry. Five hours, you blow up again. There is an altar because even though you are promising it, when your logic mind realizes the aftermath of your anger or your blowing up, or you're insulting somebody, you know, whatever it is, you say, I'm not going to do it again. And even, I'm sure in the case of our sister, she, every time she tries to fast and then she breaks it because she, the food idol and the altar is speaking, you run to it, you attend to it. But as soon as you eat the food, you feel bad because you wanted to fast and forth and back and forth it goes. Listen, that, ought, that you are already identifying what it is. The ritual in your life, my sister, is very clear. And because of that ritual, you know there's an evil altar in your life because the truth of the matter is no righteous altar will stop you from wanting to fast and spend time with God. Only evil altar hate fasting because they understand fasting for a child of God means closeness to God, more power, more deliverance. So why would an evil altar even risk God's power in your life increasing? So that's how you can identify that you're definitely dealing with an evil altar in your case repetitive activity. I, I just prayed for a guy recently who was addicted to prescription drugs. I mean, he would sneak out at night, Katie, past midnight while the wife is sleeping to go and look mm. for prescription pills because he was addicted to him at a, uh, during a time in his life when he experienced some pain. They put him on some... But even after it was gone, he was just addicted to it. And his wife got tired of it, said, I'm living, I'm taking our baby, I can live this way. And the Lord spoke to me, he said to me, Francis, you know, you have to go beyond looking at this as an addiction. This is, this is a man who is an attendant to an evil altar. He has no power letting go of. Take him into the court of heaven and help him get set free. We had a session. Uh, we went in the court of heaven. We dealt with that altar. To this day, that man is radically delivered from the desire and the ritual of, of running after this prescription drugs drugs is de completely delivered. So I know God is going to deliver you today uh, from that repetitive activity. So I want you to write down what repetitive activities are you seeing in your life? You know, sickness to sickness, depression to depression, or you, you want to get married, but every boyfriend drops you at the altar. It happens once, it's life. Happens two, three, four times, you could have a pattern. Whenever I see patterns, I'm looking for evil altars, Katie. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can relate to the pattern of repetitive behavior. Um, and so again, chat all that in because you're probably repeatedly going to the refrigerator, repeatedly hunting down the pantry, repeatedly getting on Facebook, repeatedly getting on, you know, mindlessly scrolling through the phone on Twitter or, or you know, Insta, uh, repeatedly getting angry, repeatedly getting jealous. I mean, there's just so many repeatedly, you can't stop smoking. I mean, that, those repetitive behaviors are an indicator sign that you have an evil altar in your life or your bloodline. Okay, so now we are at the sixth law, I believe, of altars, Dr. Miles. Yes, so you're going to, yes, yes. So, so we're at the six, the six uh, Katie. Uh, and let me tell you what it says so you can explain to the people. All altars speak, whether they are stationary or mobile. All altars speak, whether they are stationary or mobile. Can you explain? You know what? I'm going to let you do this one because I think you have a better handle on yes. this truth. Because we have to understand this, guys, because the voice in your head that's speaking isn't always you. And it isn't always God. Okay. And people say that demons can't implant thoughts in your mind. That's a lie from the pit. Because even when, um, when Peter told Jesus, when Jesus said he was going to go to the cross and Peter said, no, no, Lord, that will never happen to you. And Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, Satan. You do not have the mind of God. Yes. Meaning that Peter didn't come up with that thought. That thought was implanted in his mind by Satan himself to try to get Jesus not to go to the cross. So talk about how all altars can speak, Dr. Miles. 
Exactly. So when we say otters can speak, what we mean is that because otters are legal entities and they are supervised by spirit, by supervising spirit. So therefore, the voice of the otter is the voice of the supervising spirit. So that's why otters can speak. Because they have a spirit dimension and a spirit entity behind them. So the altars of God project, uh, so God can, pro- that's, what, that's what when men would, would go to the altar of God, you know, God would begin to speak at that altar. You, you see it several times in the Bible when someone wanted to hear, hear from God, they went to the altar and God spoke. Abraham wanted to hear from God about, I've come to this land of promise, you promised me, but the land is full of the Canaanites and the Pezzarites. I thought you gave me this land. He built an altar and the Lord appeared to him and spoke to him and confirmed the promise. But we see the same thing with demonic altars as well. So the, the, when we say altar speak, we mean that. There are times, Katie, when I'm, a, when I, I'm a, uh, there are times when I, uh, when I go in my house, you know, when I really want to hear from the Lord. I mean, I know I can hear from God in any place of my house. I get it. But I'm telling you, the, in my house, the strongest anointing for the voice of the Lord, if I want to really hear from the Lord, and I'm having a tough day, I go into the altar, uh, in the altar that my wife, Kamala and I have built to the Lord that we attend to every day. I'm telling you, there is a presence in that place that is incredible. I just have to kneel and bam, the voice of God begins to speak to me because it's the supervising speed behind that altar that I tend to every day. So all altars speak because they project the voice of the supervising spirit. Mm. Wow. So guys, look, I know a lot of you have thoughts in your mind like, oh, you're still hungry. You need to go get something sweet because you just ate something salty, even though you're not hungry. Or, hey, you know, you you really need that drink. If you had that drink, you'd feel a lot better. Or um, you hate that person at work and uh, they should have never said that thing to you. That was rude and evil. Sometimes it's your, a lot of times it's your soul. And a lot of times it's a demonic spirit trying to stir you up to get you offended. Try to drive you back to eat more food. Try to get you to take that drink, smoke that cigarette, take that pill try to go watch pornography. It's like, you need to question the voice you're hearing and you need to stand and challenge against it. If it's coming from your soul, you need to ask the Holy Spirit in to heal your soul of that lust that you have, that manipulation and control that is in your soul to drive you towards that idol. Or also, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to heal you of any altar you have in here that's allowing that demonic spirit to speak to you. Amen. Okay. Now, Dr. Miles, what is our next law of all of altars? And number seven is this. All altars are places of exchange. Places of exchange. Do you want to elaborate on that? I think, I I think Katie, both of us can, can just touch on this. I'll say something quickly and you can also touch on it. Listen, imagine, imagine the, the, the stock of stock exchange. When you go to the, stock exchange, you know you can buy and sell. That is what an exchange does. It allows you to buy and sell. Well, because an altar is a gate between two worlds, the world of men and the world of flesh, the world of spirits and the world of men, because it's the gate, it's the gate between two, it's the legal point of entry, it is the best platform to act as a medium of exchange. So, and the exchanges that an altar facilitates are the exchanges between the people who attend to the altar and the spirit, the supervising spirit that is on the altar. So we find this in uh, the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 8, uh, um, Katie, when Noah comes out of the ark, of the, uh, comes, out of, comes out of the ark, you know, and, uh, uh, and then he comes out of I- 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 the ark, because the, the flood has destroyed everybody else. And then the Bible says he built an altar to the Lord. And then he put the best offering he could find on the altar. So that was what he gave to God or that altar. But there was an exchange. And we know what the exchange was? When God smelled that pleasing order of worship and sacrifice coming from Noah's altar, God said, he, God said, I will no longer, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. 
So God because there was an exchange. So the curse, that's a, God made a commitment. I'll never do this again because of what was happening in that encounter, in that engagement that was happening between the author of Noah and the presence of God. So again, altars are places of exchange. God tells Abraham, go and sacrifice your son Isaac on Mount Moriah. As soon as they build the altar and they put Isaac on it, God says, oh, stop it. Now I know that you fear me. But because you came to the altar, there has to be an exchange. From today, in blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. And you know what, Katie? Even evil altars have the same exchanges. So anyway, what can you say about that, Katie? Yeah, look, guys, um, you can count on the fact that if you bring a sacrifice to the altar of God, in exchange, God's going to bless. He's going to increase. And I'm not saying that you have to work for God's favor or that you have to earn his, his blessing or anything else like that, because God always loves you. There, there is grace. God it says that all the gifts of, of, of heaven are already been bestowed upon us because of Jesus Christ. But what I am saying is that when you need an extra bonus, an extra blessing, when you need more power, more authority than you're carrying right now, when you bring a sacrifice to the altar of God, it's you always make an exchange. You can always rely on the fact that when you bring an offering of praise, of, of, fina of finances, of worship, of, of speaking in tongues, of fasting, that an exchange is going to be made. You're going to have an increase. You're going to have a breakthrough. But likewise, <laughs> if you bring a sacrifice to the altar of a demonic spirit, you're going to deal with an exchange. Now, here's the thing. People all the time blame God for sickness, disease, for lack, for poverty, for famine, for plagues. They're always blaming God, okay? But it's not God that's doing those things. God does not put sickness on you because his son died for all sickness. Why would God ever strike anyone with a sickness or a disease when his son already gave his life for us to be completely freed of the curse, freed of death and disease and disorder. He would never do that. What? So the, why does it happen? Because an exchange happens. When we sin and we bring a sacrifice to a demon God, God doesn't strike us with sickness. The exchange is that the demonic gets a legal right to put sickness on us. God didn't do it. A devil did it. And many times it comes because of an exchange. You went there and you smoked that cigarette. That's offering a sacrifice to a demon God. You went there and you overate, even though you shouldn't stop. And instead of just running to like communion, sitting down and saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to take communion. I'm not going to give an exchange. I'm not going to give a sacrifice to a demon God because I'll have to deal with a consequence with an exchange rate. There's always an exchange rate. You always have to pay something. So that's why we have to keep on bringing our sacrifices to the altar of God so that we get in exchange, we get the blessing, we get the increase, we get more revelation, we get more insight, we get all of that, okay? But when we bring that exchange to the altar of demon gods, that's when we face sickness, disease, the payment of the exchange comes our way. That's why it's very, it's very important about which altar we are attending. God, Katie, that's amazing. What uh, You just put it in an amazing way. I'll give, we'll go to law number eight, which is yours, Katie. Law number eight, all altars are places of covenant. God's covenants are irrevocable. So when you make a covenant with God, he's never going to backslide or backpedal. You've, you are involved in the highest covenant in the universe, if you're born again in Jesus Christ, yes, you are grafted into the family of God. You have all the blessings of Abraham. You have power to break the curse. You have power over death, over sin, over all of that because of your covenant with God, because you are born again in Jesus Christ. But likewise, when you make a covenant with devils by coming to agreement with, okay, I'm going to serve this altar. And then I believe that I'm going to get payback from it. You're going to face that payback until you literally go into court, the courts of heaven, and command that covenant to be broken with that demonic altar. Can yes. you elaborate, Dr. Miles? Yes, this is very powerful what you are saying, Katie. 
So in the Bible, we say this, that because altars are legal points of entry uh, for spirits in the world of men, therefore, the altars are the best place also for agreements between the natural and the supernatural world. So, so whenever God wanted to make, enter into an agreement with any human being, he would meet them at the altar, and then there'll be an agreement uh, with, between God and that particular human being. We find this with Abraham. We find this with uh, David. We find this with so many. But you see, the devil is a copycat. So he also makes agreement with people to come into their bloodlines by coming into agreement, uh, coming into a covenant with them, or an agreement at, at an altar. So definitely, altars are places of covenant. That's why, you know, if you are failing to uh, 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 break free of something in your life, you know, one of the things that, that happens when we go in the court of heaven and we take these evil altars to court, we get the legal right within the court of heaven to break this covenant because covenants are legal agreements in the spirit. They are legal agreements in the spirit, uh, but, but the goodness is that they can be destroyed. Just as altars are place of covenant or agreements, then guess what? They, it also means that when you appeal to a higher altar, when you go to God, uh, which is uh, when you go to the court of heaven, then you can, by repentance, you know, uh, uh, you can come, you can break the agreement. That's the good news about the blood of Christ. It, it can break any agreement our bloodline or ourselves have ever made with an evil altar uh, uh, at any time in our life and we can be free from it so we can begin to move forward. But the truth of the matter is all altars are places of, of covenant. That's why you, when you are tending to the altar of the Lord in your house, don't be surprised if one day while you are worshiping God, you are, you are uh, uh, just praying in tongues, just loving Jesus at the altar of the Lord in your house, then all of a sudden God speaks and makes a covenant. We, you see, God makes what I call private covenants. See, there are biblical covenants that God has made with all of us. With like, like the one Katie mentioned, we are, when you come to Christ, you become part of the covenant of Abraham because, because that is the agreement that, that Christ purchased for us at the altar of the cross. So we come in the family of God. We are born again. We, we become heirs to the, to the promise of Abraham. But do you know that in your walk with the Lord on earth, you can so move on the heart of God that God makes a private covenant with you. I mean, God has made, uh, in my work with the Lord, God has made at least five or seven, since I've been born again, God has made at least seven private covenants with me. When he told me, Francis, because of what you're doing here, I'm going to do this for you. Now, that's not for me to preach to people. It's a private covenant with the Lord. But guess what? It happened at the time when I was servicing the Lord at the altar and loving him, worshiping him, fasting. And bam, he gave me something. He gave me an agreement between him and myself concerning my destiny. And things began to open up. So again, altar saints are places of covenant. Amen. Look, Dr. Miles, we don't have much time left. I do want us to answer one other um, of the 12 spiritual laws of altars, because I think this one is super important. And that yes. is um, the law number 10. It says all altars either have got, I'm, I'm sorry, no, um, number 11. Spiritual warfare is the result of two opposing altars standing side by side. And you and I both teach about how this example is in the Bible where the Philistines captured the Ark of the Lord and brought it in and put the Ark, which is the high, was, was the highest altar in the universe at that time. They put that Ark of the Lord right next to the altar of, and the statue of Dagon. And a war ensued. Explain that. And let's talk and, and, and we'll turn it into a practical practical sense of how people are creating warfare in their own life by putting a demonic altar next to the altar of God and warfare is ensuing. Yes. So this is a very powerful law, you know, praise God. And since, listen, you know, if the, the goal of today's Bible study was just to review some of these laws with you, if we don't get to all of them, which probably will not, because we want to pray for you as well. Katie and I believe in demonstrating the power of God every time we get together and we preach. So we want to make sure that we, we, the needs that are coming out here must be addressed in the place of prayer. So if we, if we don't go through all the laws, don't worry about it. Get the book, that Idols Riot, you know, and you can get those 12 laws of an altar. But yes, so, 
what we call spiritual warfare, saints, is really nothing but the result of two opposing altars from two different kingdoms being forced or allowed to stand side by side without exception. You see this pattern in the Bible. It doesn't break. But now in the new covenant, we are the altars of the Lord. We carry, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Even your heart is the altar of the Lord. God wants your heart to be more by altar. Even though you have, I have an altar in my house, I also have an altar to the Lord in my heart. You know, because that is important. God lo- wants your heart. You know, man, man looks on the outward being, but God looks on the heart. So in the new covenant, the heart, what's in your heart is important to God. How you steward the heart, because your heart is truly an order to the Lord. So here's what happens, though, in many of our lives, is that what happens is we experience spiritual warfare that we think is the devil attacking us. But the truth of the matter is, because we are now building the altar of the Lord in our lives, as the altar of the Lord begins to to release the light of Jesus in our soul, it inevitably begins to shed light on evil altars that were in our soul or our bloodline before we came to Jesus, or even the ones that we, because of disobedience to God, because even Christians, after we are born again, sometimes we can be disobedient to God and we just open a door, you know, and we get addicted to something or, you know, we, we are addicted to someone, whatever it is. But the point is, when, the altar of, when we begin to attend to the altar of God, it releases the light of God. And just like what happened in the temple of Dagon, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant, immediately, without anybody saying anything, when the Philistines were at home sleeping, when they came back, the two altars had been fighting. Dagon was lying on the floor, you know, and then they tried to prop him up again. God hit him again. This time he broke his legs, broke his hands. Showing this is exactly what happens. Now, Katie, you can take it to the next level about how this works in the area of the wounded soul and then the, the order of God. Yeah, look, guys, you're making your own warfare and you don't even realize it. Okay. Every time you attend to an evil altar, somehow food, smoking, drinking, whatever, that altar to that demon God begins the Lord's, the altar of the Lord, he goes whack. (laughs) And just like Dagon ended on up on his face with his hands and his feet and his head broken off, a war starts because God begins to attack that altar. And that manifests in that demon God kicking up dust in your life, causing pain, inflammation, um, attack on your mind, the addictions to rise up, and to increase and there's a war you're creating your own warfare guys so look i want you to realize that that every time you serve the altar of a negative demonic evil spirit you're going to face warfare because god will not share space he wants it all 100 percent, 100 percent, guys he wants all your attention all your love, all your sacrifices, all your time. And he will not share. He will whack that altar. And then as a result, that demonic spirit will rise up and try to assault you. So you need to get healed in your soul of those altars and you need to get your home cleansed of those altars. So look, we're about to activate now. Before we do, I want to give you a chance to sow. Why would I do that? Because look, a lot of times, a lot of the warfare we're creating is because we're spending a lot of money on our demon spirits, on our idols, on these altars. We're buying cosmetics and it's okay. Look, it's okay to spend money on cosmetics. It's okay to buy shoes and clothes. It's okay to go out to dinner. It's okay to go on vacations. God wants you to live life and live it abundant. But you will know in your knower, in your heart right now, you will know that you know that you know if you've crossed the line. Are you spending too much money on the cosmetics, too much money on the vacations? Have you broken through a boundary that the Lord has set up for you? Are you crossing over and spending more than you know you should? And and I don't have to tell you what it is. You know it. The Holy Spirit's already convicted you 
about where you're spending your money at. Okay. In fact, if you got the guts, guys, chat in. Where have you broken the boundaries that the Holy Spirit has placed on your life? Where have you gotten out of control with your spending and you're bringing your offerings and you're an excessive spending and you've lost control of good stewardship? Where are you bringing it? What are you spending it on? The Holy Spirit's probably already been talking to you. Part of getting healed and, and a breakthrough is through repentance and through also bringing an offering unto the Lord. Dr. Miles, there's a great scripture in the Psalms. I believe it's Psalm 96 that talks about idolatry and coming into the courts with an offering. Can you share that with everyone? Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Katie, for, for that. Yes, there is a, there is a scripture. Glory to God in uh, Psalm 96. Send Psalm 96. And I'm just going to read it for you here because I think that everybody needs to really uh, know the scripture and always have it with you because it explains why the, uh, uh, this is an important protocol uh, of coming before the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, literally, it says that come into his court. You know, come into his court, praise God. You know, come into his court. You know, give to the Lord the glory that is due his, give to the Lord the glory that due his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. That is uh, 96 verse 8. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. But the, but the reason he says this is because in verse 5, he says, he says this, in verse 4 and 5, actually, of 96, Psalm, he says, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, is to be feared above the gods, and for all the gods of the peoples are idols. So now the Bible shows us, actually, that idols are actually demon gods uh, who are hiding behind the physical infrastructure so that you don't really know those, those are the ones you are worshiping, you know. But the Lord made the heaven. So in other words, in other words God is saying literally, how can you come before the idols and their altars and you give them your very best? You give them your offering, your time, your money, and then you come before the Lord, your God, and then you come empty handed. No, you need to give to the Lord the glory that is due his name. How? By bringing an offering into the court of heaven. And I'm telling you, in this case, it's a peace offering because we are making peace with the court of heaven concerning the, 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 because the, concerning the idolatry, the erecting of evil altars. That, that, that we, are, we or our bloodline are guilty of, that we want erased tonight as we come before the court of heaven. So again, uh, you can see on the screen the different ways you can give. Now, when you are giving in the comment section of the giving, you know, just let us know, just write in the comment section 12 laws of an altar so that we know uh, that you are giving into this message. So in your comment section as you are giving, uh, by whatever means you are choosing, just type in 12 laws of an altar so that we know that you are giving into this particular service. Praise the Lord. Because we're getting ready to take you into the court of heaven. Because like, like I told you, me and Katie Souza, we, we believe in demonstrating the power of God. This is another reason why we want you, if you're in, in Atlanta or even anywhere else, you can live stream the healing service we're going to be doing Friday night. We'll talk, about, we'll talk about, about that healing service before we close. But right now, the, in, on, in, your, in front of you, you can see on the screen the different ways to give. By mail, online, by Zelle, by text to give, by cash up, and by Venmo. You can see right on the screen the different ways you can give. And some of you are already beginning to give. But, you know, give that offering to the Lord as we get ready to go into the court of heaven. So, um, uh, Katie, can you take it out from here and then uh, maybe deal with the issue of the soul as we go in the court of heaven? Or maybe you want to read some of the comments, pray into that. How do you want to do, how, how do you want to do this? Okay, yeah, guys. You know what? Um, honestly, we're not here to get your finances, but I encourage you to sow because it's for your own blessing and your breakthrough. There's been many times when I personally have been led by the Lord to give an altar, to give an offering because I was going after a particular altar or idolatrous spirit that was controlling my life, be it food 
or, you know, I used to spend a lot of money on cosmetics and shampoos and everything else. And I needed breakthrough. I needed to break free from the control of spending my money, my energy, my time on those demon gods and the altars and stop serving those altars so that their power would be diminished in my life and that the altar of God could completely take over. So again, there's ways to give. We are about to go into an activation. So I want you to do what that Psalm says, bring your offering before the Lord, give glory to him so that all the altars of the the idols of the nations can be demolished in your life. So as you plant your seed, I'm going to pray for your soul to be healed of the control, to be healed of the altars that are in your soul that are manipulating you, controlling your mind, your will and your emotions and driving you to that altar and to that idol. And then Dr. Miles is going to take us into the courts of heaven and we're going to judge those altars so that we can cause the power that they have over your life to be completely demolished. All right. So I want you to pray with me. Come back to the screen for me right now. Yes. And I want you to get into a place of worship right now. So let's just start worshiping the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, my God. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We, we magnify you right now. We worship you. Just start worshiping the Lord right where you're at. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. We give you the honor and the praise right now. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord. We magnify you. We lift you up. We thank you, Lord. We invite the Holy Spirit. We invite your Holy Spirit to come right now to touch everyone online so that everyone online can be truly healed by the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. That power will be released through the screen as we're praying and also from their inner man where the spirit of Christ dwells within them out into their soul to get them healed. Lord, I thank you, Lord. We, we honor you and we worship you right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that you're going to heal their mind, will, and emotions, cause them to be free of all the control of these demonic spirits that are driving them to serve the altars of demonic spirits that are ruining and sabotaging their life. We praise you, Jesus. You died. You died so that they could be healed of all idolatry. You died so that their soul would be clean of every altar that's been built in their soul right now in the name of Jesus. All right. So the first thing I'm going to pray for you for is trauma. Why trauma? Because many times when we go through a trauma, when we go through a difficult stress, or a difficult circumstance, or a challenge, or an accident, or the loss of a loved one, or an elongated battle that we've been through, that that trauma wounds your soul, and then that pain in your soul from that trauma drives you to idolatry, to find something to comfort your soul. You've been through a trauma, and now shopping makes you feel better. Eating brings comfort to the pain you feel in your soul from that trauma. Smoking that cigarette or drinking that alcohol takes the edge off of the pain and the grief that's in your soul from that stressful crisis that you went through. Trauma is a trigger that leads to idolatry. So right now I want you to chat in. What is the trauma that you've been through? And can you recognize right now how that traumatic experience could have wounded you and caused you to seek after idols to find comfort for the pain that you've experienced in your soul? Okay, so chat that in. Is it what was the trauma? And how are you using idolatry to comfort you? Do you feel better when you get online and you throw a bunch of stuff in the cart? And you spend money as soon as you push that buy now button, you know, or that put it in my cart button. You can actually feel your soul, you know, going, oh, that felt good. Yeah, I like that. I'm happy about that package that's going to come in the mail. It brings me comfort to think about that package arriving in the mail. 
That is a sign that you've been traumatized and you're using idolatry to comfort that pain. And you're servicing, and thus you're servicing that altar, that demonic altar, and you're making it stronger, stronger, okay? Chat in. I'm just going to read some stuff right now. My parents divorced. My husband's affair. My breast cancer, a fire, an eviction. I went through a rape, a car accident. I've had sexual abuse. See, people are naming your traumas right now. Um, you, yeah, a child put up for adoption abuse, physical and sexual abuse. My mother not present in my life. Okay. Childhood abuse, multiple car wrecks, rejection, mental abuse, betrayals, disappointments, sicknesses, loss of job, abuse. Um, my brother and father, um, grief from accidents, severe child abuse and bullying, bullying. Father told me he doesn't want me. Me emotional abuse right now. My mother beat me with metal pipes. Okay. These, wow, guys, thank you for being so transparent. Can you see that so many of you have been through horrible traumas, horrible stressors and crises in your life? Okay. And can you now connect them to you reaching out to idolatry to find comfort for the pain? Amen. So that's what we're going to do right now. Thanks for chatting in. Keep going, guys. But also, I want you to receive now. Okay. As I pray, I want you to pray after me so that we can get your soul healed. And then Dr. Miles is going to take us into the court. So just repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I've been through vicious, painful trauma. And I need your help. Say, Lord God, I confess that the trauma and the crises that I've lived through have driven me to find comfort for my pain in idolatry. Say, Lord God, I ask that the Holy Spirit would move right now. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, flow outwardly from my inner man, my spirit, into my soul, into my mind, keep praying with me, into my will, and into my emotions. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to heal my wounds right now in Jesus name Holy Spirit fill me with dunamis power say dunamis means excellent of soul say Holy Spirit fill me with soul healing power say heal every wound in my soul that came from these traumas. Say, go deep, Holy Spirit. Touch me and heal me in the most painful areas in my soul. Fill every wound with dunamis, excellence of soul healing power. I believe you are going to work in my soul right now, Holy Spirit, to heal me of every single trauma that has ever wounded me. Holy Spirit, come on, keep praying after me. Say, I know that you're filling me with dunamis power. My mind is healed, so I think right thoughts. I have a clean memory bank. I reason rightly. And every part of my mind is healed. My will is healed by you, Holy Spirit, and dunamis power. 
So I only choose to pursue the things of God, not I idols. Holy Spirit, keep praying with me. I decree my emotions are healed of every wound that came from trauma. I am no longer controlled in my emotions by those painful wounds. I am filled with dunamis power. I am excellent a soul. And I no longer need any idol to make me feel satisfied or comforted. Look, I hope you're praying with me because that's how you're going to get healed. So now say, Holy Spirit, invade every part of my soul. Heal me now with dunamis power. And I decree, I am strengthened, refreshed, and nourished in my inner man by dunamis power and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Dr. Miles, can you take us into court? I want us to, to go into the court of heaven. I, I want you to pray after me. I'm going to be as slow as possible because I want you to get a breakthrough. Because after we do this, then Kerry, Susan, and I will begin to pray for the miracles. You know, what we are dealing with, we are removing all the legalities the enemy can be using against us. So I want you to pray this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father, righteous judge, I come into the court of heaven by the blood of your son, Jesus. The blood of your son, Jesus. Heavenly Father, righteous judge. Heavenly Father, righteous judge. I'm asking for access to the family court of heaven. I'm asking for access to the family court. Lord, I'm in your courtroom so you can adjudicate. So you can adjudicate. And give me your righteous judgment. And give me righteous judgment. Against the evil altars. Against the evil altars. And the demonic gods connected to these evil altars. And the demonic gods connected to these evil altars. That are in my bloodline or in my soul. That are in my bloodline and in my soul. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died for my deliverance. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died for my deliverance. I remind this court of the finished work of Jesus. I remind this court of the finished work of Jesus. But Heavenly Father, I also come into agreement with the adversary. But Heavenly Father, I've also come into agreement with the adversary. Concerning any legitimate accusation he has against me in the court of heaven. Concerning any legitimate accusation he has against me in the court of heaven. Heavenly Father, I activate the law of repentance. Heavenly Father, I activate the law of repentance. Which says, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just which says that when we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just. To forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To forgive our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, I repent. Father, I repent. Concerning iniquities and transgression in my life and in my bloodline. Concerning iniquities and transgressions in my life and in my bloodline. Especially the iniquity of uh, idolatry and erecting evil altars especially the iniquity of idolatry and erecting evil altars. I'm asking that you would wash me by the blood of Yeshua. I'm asking that you would wash me by the blood of Yeshua. Heavenly Father, I now subpoena these all evil altars that are fighting against me. I now subpoena all evil altars that are fighting against me. And the demon gods behind them. And the demon gods behind them. I subpoena them to appear in the court of heaven to face criminal prosecution, Lord. I subpoena them into the court of heaven for first criminal prosecution, Lord. Concerning the ransacking and the destruction they have done in my life. Concerning the ransacking and destruction they've done in my life. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am asking that you'd, you'd, release, you'd release a permanent injunction I'm asking that you would release a permanent injunction in my life against these idols and evil altars. In my life against these idols and evil altars. I'm asking the court of heaven to issue 
a, to issue me a bill of divorcement. I'm asking the court of heaven to issue a, a divorcement. A bill of divorcement. A bill of divorcement. Concerning any evil altar that is claiming me as an attendant. Concerning evil, any evil altar that is claiming me as an attendant. I refuse to be an attendant anymore to any evil altar whatsoever. I, re I refuse to be an attendant to any evil altar anymore whatsoever. By the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Heavenly Father. Now, Heavenly Father. I'm now asking, Lord. I'm now asking, Lord. That the blood of Jesus would wipe out, would wipe away every legal right that these idols and evil altars had in my life. That the blood of Jesus would wipe out every legal right that these idols and evil altars have in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I now ask you for a divine restraining order. I now ask you for a divine restraining order. To be released in my life. To be released in my life. Against any idol or evil altar. Against any idol or evil altar. That may try. That may try. To come after me after these proceedings. To come after me after these proceedings. I'm asking that a divine restraining order would be issued against such activities. I, get, I ask that a divine restraining order be issued against such activities. I declare and declare, Lord, that from now onwards. I decree and declare, Lord, from now onwards. You are releasing grace upon my life. You are releasing grace upon my life. To build a strong altar of the Lord in my life. To bring, to build a strong altar of the Lord in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, I bring the offering I have given into this message. Now, Lord, I bring the offering that I've given into this message. As a witness in the court of heaven. As a witness in the court of heaven. That with this seed, I am making a, I, I, with this seed, I am breaking away from servicing any evil altar. That with this seed, I am breaking away servicing any evil altar in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray lord i now receive by faith lord i now receive by faith your righteous verdict of judgment against these evil altars your righteous verdict of judgment against these evil altars and the demonic gods behind them and the demonic gods behind them that they are cast out and driven out of my life that they're cast out and driven out of my life lord any demonically engineered sickness Lord, any demonically engineered sickness that I'm dealing with now, that I'm dealing with now, we, we, because of these evil altars is now broken. Because of these evil altars are now broken. So I'm ready to receive my healing now. So I'm ready to receive my healing now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you begin to pray for healing, Katie? In Jesus right now, Father. Thank you. Thank you. So I speak to every evil altar in your life that is driving you to eat, to smoke, to take pills, to be anxious, to be depressed, to be angry, to spend money, to shop incessantly, that's controlling any evil altar. And I say, you break apart right now, you split apart, you pour out ashes, and then you become non-effective in their life in the name of Jesus. Yes, now. Lord. In Jesus' name now. In Jesus' name now. In Jesus' name now. I speak to every demonic spirit behind those altars, those spirits of infirmity, those spirits of witchcraft, divination, the serpent spirit, any spirit that's a cursing spirit, that spirit of disease and disorder, of pain and inflammation, a spirit of poverty, a spirit of lack, a spirit of divorce, a spirit of harassment in the night of a spiritual spouse in the name of Jesus. And I say, you come out. You come out. You come out. You come out of the place you came in, the time you came in, the place you came in, and the cause that allowed you to come in. I go back in time right now to every single place in time and space where an altar was set up in your bloodline and in your life, 
And I judge that altar by the power of the port of heaven, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I say, you come out. I break you apart. I stretch forth my hand in the name of Jesus to judge that altar now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, you know, there's somebody who has suffered miscarriages as a, as a perpetual activity. God, I see you getting a baby boy. God is breaking, has broken the power of that evil altar. You've been believing God for the child. God is releasing that right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody with copper tunnel is, there's a healing in your eyes right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there's a twinkling, like almost a fairly twinkling around your eyes. Right now, God is healing you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, somebody who has vicious nightmare, vicious nightmare. You know, I actually see you coming out of them with a brick in a sweat. God has broken the power of that evil order in your life. You are, not, you are going to sleep like a baby tonight in Jesus' mighty name. God is releasing that anointing right now in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus. Glory to God. And Receive right your now, healing right now those in Jesus' name. Those who are addicted to cigarettes and alcohol and other pharmacia, I judge that witchcraft spirit and that altar in your bloodline and in your life. And I judge every place that you would sneak off to go and get that cigarette or that, that drink. I, I release a judgment against it. And I break that repetitive cycle now, 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 in your soul and in your mind, in your desires, in your emotions, in your lusts, in, in everything that the enemy is using to control your soul, to drive you to those places where you would sneak away and sneak that cigarette or that drink or that pill or even that pornography right now. I judge those altars. I erase those images that are in your soul right now by the light of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and power right now. And cleansing your body. I command that the Holy Spirit would cleanse your body of all nicotine, of all alcohol, of all of the pills that you're addicted to in the name of Jesus and would cleanse those images of those pornography of that pornography off of your soul your mind your will and your emotions now now in jesus name now now in jesus name now now in jesus name thank you lord right now somebody with a drug addiction is being delivered right now right now right now right now you, you are addicted to prescription drugs that testimony I told earlier, the Lord said was for you. There's some, there, I think there's a couple of people right now. Right now, I want you to release your faith and receive deliverance from the from the your your addiction to prescription drugs because the authors behind it has been destroyed the spirits behind it have been judged you are free right now in the name of the lord jesus christ god is flushing all of those chemicals out of your system right now receive the anointing of god in jesus mighty 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 name mighty name hallelujah thank you jesus Hallelujah. Thank I, yeah, you, Jesus. I see a lot of people. Your mm -hmm. eyes are watering right now because you're being healed of the trauma. Right now, if you have a water expulsion, you need to come online. That's a supernatural sign that you're being healed. And I see eyes are being healed right now. I see eyes are opening. Eyes are opening. So I see that in the revelatory realm that you are understanding now that you've been under the control of a demonic spirit and an evil altar. So your eyes are opening to that revelation and that truth. But your eyes are also opening right now to be healed. I command floaters to dissolve. I command cataracts to dissolve. I speak to every demonic serpent spirit behind those cataracts or behind the floaters, behind blindness, behind eye loss. In the name of Jesus, I fill you with the light, which is life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And that's what he said before he healed the blind man who was born blind from birth and then sent him to the pool of Salome. I release that power that the eyes of your heart are flooded with light and you are being healed now, now, now. Now, 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 now in Jesus' name. And the Lord just wants me to tell people, I, I'm sensing that people today who are in business. You've had, God said he's delivered you today. 
uh, from the altars that destroy biz- some some of you do, every business you try you know you're called to business but you would lose the miracle you it, things will just break apart at the age of a breakthrough in business you know and god saying right now i'm just that evil order is destroyed god said right now begin to ask him for recompense in business you're about to see a breakthrough in business like never before so right now i pray for every business person on this on this on this uh Bible study who has been dealing with challenges in business. I mean, uh, up and down, up and down. God says that are broken that up and down uh, uh, that you are going through in business. You now you're going to see the release of the Lord come upon your business right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah! Praise God, man. As somebody with arthritis, arthritis, you got very. I mean, I sit in the elbows, very. I mean, the elbows. I see you actually like wincing in pain sometimes when you, you, if you move your hand in certain ways, it's around your elbows. Really, it's been getting worse. But God right now is healing you in the elbows. Just write in the comment section and say to the mouse, that was me being healed from the arthritis right now in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. I'm seeing in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, talks about how the women of that day would put bracelets around their wrists and their ankles as a sign of worship to their demon gods and goddesses. And I see those being broken off of you right now. They will no longer control you. It's like it's like handcuffs, these ornaments that are around the wrist, okay? And it acts like a handcuff because it keeps you in bondage to that demon spirit. So I command those to break off of your wrists right now break off of your wrists those those signs of your devotion to those demonic gods and goddesses that you are being released from those handcuffs those ornamental bracelets that are symbolic of your idolatrous worship you are being broken free right now and you might even uh, have uh, problems in your wrists or your joints and you're being, you're going to feel crackling as you uh, move your wrists and joints around as you're being healed. The Bible says that demonic spirits cannot walk. Idolatrous spirits cannot walk. So they cause crippling diseases. I command the pain in your joints to go now. I break that pain now. And I command that idolatrous crippling spirit to come out in the name of Jesus. And I command new cartilage to grow in your joints right now in Jesus name, right now, right now, right now. Look, if you're feeling the power of God, the heat, the cold, the watering eyes, the water expulsion, ears, nose, whatever pain lessening, you need to chat it in now. I thought before we we close, while people are chatting in, before we close the broadcast, I, we need to answer a few questions that came on. I just want to say, people are saying, Denise is saying no more pain. Krista's saying, feel lots of heat. Sally's saying, my eyes are watering. Sharon is saying, uh, I'm feeling cold. Monique says, eyes are watering. Um, uh, another one says, I'm feeling that. Um, feeling wetness in my eyes. I feel popping in my back. That's Tesha. Angela says, I have a bad headache right now. That means you're in the midst of being delivered right now. Okay. Um, Krista said, feeling lots of heat. Um, Donna says, yawning and eyes watering. Um, Court says, Watford says, I'm feeling something going down my throat. Da- Linda says, eyes are watering. Monique says, feeling heat in my chest. Um, Janim says, my eyes are watering. Sh- uh, Shiva says, I'm actually crying. Um, the other people saying, heat on the head. Um, watering eyes, body is shaking. Kingdom says body is shaking. Okay. Frank says eyes are watering. Um, mouth is yawning. Lots of yawning going on. Lots of uh, Lorraine says eyes are watering. Uh, body says, uh, Doris says my body shook when you prayed. So there is, um, a lot. A lot of I can't even keep up with it, Doctor Miles. Can't even keep up. Keep on I mean, chat, that, chatting them in, though, guys. Keep chatting. That's what happens when you we go in the court of heaven and we deal with this thing legally. Miracles happen like water. So let me just go through the announcement. Since you can see in front of you, uh, listen. 
Uh, we've only got five spaces left for the live one because they, they, we have limited on space on the live one. So listen, there's five more. Get Be among the final five to come to the live school. But for the rest of you, I'm telling you, there's a live stream option. You can become a student online. Just go to idolsriot.com and I'm, we're going to live stream you the school. You're going to get a student manual. I mean, the book. I mean, the ebook. So it's really powerful what you get when you become an online student. It's very dynamic. Plus, we, we take your questions from online. Now we have a miracle service. Uh, Katie, what can people expect on Friday night? It's also going to be live streaming. But what are you sensing for the miracle night on Friday night? Uh, by the way, it's open to the public. We always see, Dr. Miles, and you know it, and everybody that comes, is, we always see spines moving into place. We see metal disappearing. We see people have floaters disappear, cataracts disappear, blind eyes opening. We see people with ringing in their ears. That is a very common miracle that happens, that ringing in the ears gets healed. We see deaf ears opening. We see people coming out of their wheelchairs. These are normal things that happen in every time we do an idols riot meeting. We see growths, uh, cancer growths, tumors disappear. So this is a normal, these are all normal. You can expect these things to happen. Um, we had a bullet disappear from a guy's leg during the last meeting. We had a lady had screws in her back from falling um, off of a, like a 40 foot fall into the water. Um, she had broken her back and her neck. The screws disappeared, proven by a metal detector. So these are just a few of the types of miracles that people are going to experience. So they need to sign up for the Idols Riot Intensive Healing School. You can come in person. There's only a few seats left. You can get online. You can watch it right from the comfort of your living room if you can't get to the event physically. And then also on the, on the Miracle Healing Service, you can watch it online and or you can show up in Atlanta and get a miracle in person as we go into this uh, live healing miracle service on Friday night. Praise God. So this flyer will be on my web. It will be on my Facebook. It will be on the Facebook for Katie Souza. For those of you who are looking for details on this uh, event, Katie Souza and I are going to combine together. We are going to do a big meeting downtown Atlanta uh, uh, with uh, Pastor Benny Hinn and Suzanne Hinn. Uh, look at the amazing Bishop Tudo Bismarck from Zimbabwe, uh, Dr. Alvida King. It's going to be an amazing time. Now, you can register for this event, and if you use the, uh, the coupon code KINGS NOW, KINGS NOW, then you can uh, uh, get a, a discount, a $20 discount off the registration if you use KINGS NOW. We're making it available to you guys for joining us on this amazing Bible study. So if you're coming to King's conference or you're going to be live streaming it, now there's no discount for the live stream, but if you're coming for the live one, you can use the discount code King's Now. You know, King's Now, uh, no, no, no space, just one word, King's Now, uh, and then you can get that uh, $20 discount. So that's going to be October 28th to 31st. It's going to be incredible downtown Atlanta. Praise God. But again, uh, we are excited uh, that you came tonight. Now, very quickly before we close, Katie, there's a couple of questions on the Q&A. Can I read you some of them? Yeah, and just as you do that, just, you know, Geraldine just said, I just noticed my floaters have, are disappearing. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so look, guys, um, chat in your miracle. If you didn't get one yet, go back and watch this broadcast again. Activate again. Share the broadcast with people that haven't watched it yet. So let's just give them this quickly. Uh, uh, Christina is saying, Katie, is there an altar connected to having consistent house, house, housing troubles, contention in relationship that seems to come from nowhere? I would absolutely. And I don't know if this is the same Christina that just texted in her floaters are gone or not, but she's already had a miracle. And if you see, if you're having problems with housing, think about, you know, how many times We've all had problems with our housing. Our parents had problems with their housing. You know, our grandparents, we lost houses. We couldn't pay the mortgage. Uh, you know, we didn't have, we got evicted. There, there can be all kinds of altars, negative altars that were set up through repeated crises in our lives. And so uh, 
if I were you, watch the broadcast again and specifically put your faith on that altar that is blocking just a peaceful coexistence in steady, consistent, reliable housing to be broken. It's a lot, lot of slaughter. How do you destroy many, uh, many altars in your bloodline on both sides of mother and father's side of free masonry? So, Lara, it's pretty much the same thing. You go in the court of heaven, you know, uh, you go in the court. That's why I think if you get the book Idols Riot by in, on Kingdom or just the physical book, Kerry and I put some very powerful prayers to do it. And now you are saying in, your, in here, I, Lara, you are saying that, you know, we, there's, because of what your background, there's so many altars. How many? I mean, do you have to go to the court of heaven for each altar? Well, Kerry has an amazing teaching on the Assyrian king uh, in the book that talks about the Assyrian king is identified by the Bible as the ruler over the kingdom of idols. So sometimes one of the ways you can do it instead of having to go after every altar, unless God is showing it to you, is you take the Assyrian king to court because ultimately he is a strong man over idols. Is that not right, Katie? Yeah, look, guys. Um... You've got to get the book in order to really understand this revelation. But, you know, Isaiah 10 is that whole chapter is about the Assyrian king. And it says that one of the things that the Assyrian king boasts about himself is he said, are not all my officers either subjugated kings or they're equal, meaning that all the guys underneath him were kings. So he would go from nation to nation to nation. And he would take all, all the people into captivity and steal all their money and, and cross their boundaries and steal their nest eggs and everything else. So he was going into all the nations where all these idols were worshipped and he was more powerful than all of them. And he even says that. He says, are not my idols more powerful than the ones of Samaria and Jerusalem and Damascus? Meaning he's the strong man over all the idols. So when we go after him, we find the strong man, then we can thoroughly ransack his house and that's important because in the world today there are millions millions of idols that people worship in india there's like two million plus idols alone so we need this information that's why go to idolsriot.com and get your copy of idols riot it's a game changer and i say that from a personal perspective because it changed my life completely so, guys, you know that we, could, we couldn't get to all the questions. We love you. We so appreciate you. Uh, but but I, in answering, I, I read some of the questions you guys are asking. Here's the deal. What you now need to continue to do is the posture. Thanksgiving is always the final posture when you come out of the court of heaven. What, does that, what do I mean? You now need to stand your ground. You know, when the devil tries to mess with you, because you see, Jesus said, when an unclean spirit leaves the man, it will go in the water, it will go into dry place, but then it will try to come back to see if you would open up to it again. Sometimes the enemy who will, will may, may simulate what looks like it's, come, it, it, it's a return, but it's not a return. It's the enemy trying to poke you, trying to see if you're going to allow it. So you've got to stand your ground and say, devil, I'm not going there with you. I was, I was taken into the court of heaven by Katie Sousa and Francis Miles. I have been delivered. The court of heaven has already ruled on, the, on my deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Thanksgiving after the fact is very important in the kingdom. It's how you reinforce your victory. Even when you are being healed, some of you as we live, you are being healed. Some of you are totally healed, but some of you are still being healed. If you continue to thank God for your healing, for your deliverance, even after the end of this broadcast, trust me, there is going to be a full manifestation. But thanksgiving is a secret weapon of how you enforce what's already been done. So I want you to stay in an atmosphere of thanksgiving. Thank God for your deliverance and do not let the devil uh, uh, tell you otherwise because this is the, the day of your deliverance. And I know that the God gave me a witness. There's been a release in your life today. So enjoy that, but do not stop step away from the place of thanksgiving and guys one thing as we wrap it now if you did get a miracle tonight please get your phone out record that miracle on a video of a selfie video and make it under two minutes tell us what your condition was tell us what you experienced during the broadcast and then send that miracle to selfies at katiesouza.com that's selfies at katiesouza.com okay dr miles we're going to wrap it Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. And don't forget, go to idolsriot.com, buy your book, 
and also sign up for this weekend in Atlanta. You can watch online or you can be there in person. All right. And share this video so that other people can get their breakthrough too. All right. Thank you, Dr. Miles for tonight. And thanks everybody for being online. 